Today we're focusing on perks in Warzone and I did a little bit of testing and there's several of them that just do not give enough information to tell you how good or bad or useful the perk is when you're selecting it. One example, we'll go ahead and kind of go down the line. We'll start from left to right from perk one slot all the way to perk four and we'll go through these. Mountaineer, it just says reduces fall damage. That doesn't sound all that great, but this will literally double the amount of fall damage you can have before it's lethal. Normally at around 13 and a half meters, if you fall, it'll be insta death. Up until that, you'll get various degrees of damage that'll tick away at your bar, maybe half health at like eight meters or whatever the case is. This perk literally doubles that height up to 27 meters. You can kind of see the little clips I'm gonna be running for some of these. I, I did test the majority of these ones that are worth testing to get a little bit more accurate information because they can be a little confusing. So this one is definitely an A tier perk that's underrated at the moment, especially when you're talking about something like Vondel or Ashika Island, you could just jump off buildings, hit the ground, plate up, whatever. And then when they got to jump down, if they don't have it. They got a parachute. You shoot them out the sky. So a ton of finesse potential. Mechanic says it reduced a vehicle repair time, increased fueling speed, which are kind of the same bundle and then reduced fuel consumption. Uh, essentially, this one's going to help you out where it's going to fuel up and you're going to be able to go and get the fuel is going to last about 20% longer. So 20% faster and 20% longer, which is cool, but I don't really see a use case for this, especially since it doesn't work for air vehicles. This would be like very broken on the heavy chopper, but it doesn't work, so not worth using. Shrapnel, explosive damage delays enemy health regeneration. I believe it's about by three and a half seconds it'll add on to that time. So currently it's seven seconds before you start healing. I believe this will knock it up to 10 and a half, which is super powerful but you do have to hit them with explosives. So maybe if you're using a grenade launcher or something like that, make a little bit more sense. Slows enemies movement and then briefly disables tactical sprint when enemy legs are hit. So cool, but not all that powerful. I probably wouldn't use that one. Scavenger, collect ammo, armor plate, and cash from dead players. Generally, you're gonna get cash ammo and armor plate. I think there's only like 500 cash. So it's not even worthwhile. They definitely would have to buff it or Make scavenger so it's fully loaded. So if you go grab your loadout, you will be fully loaded when you spawn in. So that's a slight change I think they should have for that one. Battle hardened, we know that, you know, it's just not enough. It needs to almost negate all damage or whatever. We know that the flash has changed, so you have to actually be looking at it. The stun still still freezes you for quite a bit of time, even with battle hardened. So for me, I don't necessarily know if it's worth it. Frangible bullets, people aren't really using shock sticks. It's going to reduce the effect and immune, immune to shop snapshots. Snapshots aren't really meta in the game, so I don't see a reason to run battle hardened currently. EOD reduces damage from non kill streak explosive and fire reset fuse timer. When you're picking up a grenade, people aren't really running grenades. And if they are, they're cooking them perfectly. You're not going to be able to grab it, refuse it and throw it back. I think that's a little bit lackluster. I think this one could be good if we were like in an RPG meta or something like that, but the explosives, although they do deal quite a bit of damage, these will, this will mitigate a little bit of that. I don't know if it's worth it. It is it's still probably like a B tier or a B tier style perk. Strong arm. This one's kind of interesting from the testing. It shows that you're able to throw 25% further, which is nice. See the trajectory of your throw. So if you're not really good at throwing into a window or whatever, you can actually just line it up, see where the line goes and just throw it there. So it's just a little bit easier. Spotter works very much like engineer and spotter from the past. Spot enemy equipment and kill streaks through walls. Enemy down sight, you can highlight them for the teammate. And then you can hack enemy claymores, proximine, C4, and trophy systems, which that one's cool. Maybe someone on your team runs that. Next one up, this is sleight of a hand. Uh, it's super vague here. It says reload faster. So even though it has the same hand animation that we had last year for Warzone 2, it is not the same perk. Uh, we had fast hands and it was in the perk three category or whatever you want to call it. It was the second tier of perks. Uh, but this one is sleight of hand. It doesn't come with any of the other stuff. You have to remember that they put some of like the amped weapon swap speed and some other various perks in the game by default that you don't even have to worry about equipping this one. So now it is just sleight of hand. It kind of got nerfed in a sense because we get those things by default and they've allocated it to the perk one and two slot. What this does, it will make your reload faster, but it varies wildly depending on what gun you have. And I believe Exclusive Ace did a full breakdown of the, the faster holster from MW3 that allowed for fast hands. This is essentially matching a lot of that, where some guns can see as little benefit of 5%. 
meaning it's probably useless to use with that gun. And then other ones can get about 30 to 40% improvement, which it would drastically improve. Even the clip from you can see right here, the Bass B goes from about four second reload down to a little over two and even improves so much so that it reloads faster than the Swarm would slide a hand. So it takes it from a miserable reload to a well-improved one. So hopefully they dialed it in at some point. I don't see that being the case, but I would experiment, see if you like it with the guns you have with and without, and to see if you notice a difference. If you don't notice, probably a waste of perk in that scenario. Double time, increased tax sprint duration and reduces refresh time. It actually doubles your tax sprint duration. You're able to tax sprint for twice as long and it's gonna refresh faster, but because we don't see the stamina bar, it's really hard to be intuitive with this one. Very popular perk. This is the vast majority of players are using right now are sleight of hand and double time. That's like the main first two perks. Uh, I would even recommend if sleight of hand is on guns that you don't want to use, maybe Mountaineer could be a take a spot of that. Or you replace it with double time if you don't really feel like it's helping you at all. Because once your stamina is gone, you still have to wait for it to come back. And depending on if you're slide canceling, it pauses each time you slide canceling. So unless they change the mechanic, I don't see double time as valuable, even though it will definitely help you have more tax sprint and get around a little bit faster. Irradiated. This one is actually a fun one to test. A little awkward because you have to run into the gas, make sure you don't have any of the other variables going on. But irradiated, it helps you to move 10% faster and it actually reduces the amount of health damage you're taking by 10%. So you get an extra couple ticks out of it. Normally you take 10 damage uh, and that for 150 health, that will go ahead and give you 15 ticks at 15 seconds. You can stay in the gas before you die. This particular case, you're gonna get 10% better movement speed. It moves the ticks down to nine damage and that'll give you 17 ticks worth 17 seconds. So you get two extra seconds. Not all that great, maybe super niche if you're trying to survive in the gas, do a no kill win or something like that, it could be useful. Get a couple extra seconds out of it. But in general, I don't see a ton of value in irradiated. Focus, reduce flinch when aiming down sight, hold breath. I don't think this has any value compared to the other ones, unless you're just sniping and you want to be able to hold your breath longer and have reduced flinch. I think the best three perks for these are gonna be Mountaineer, Sleight of Hand, and Double Time. Everything else is pure preference, but those are the three that I think probably give you the biggest bang for your buck in the category they're in, and especially Sleight of Hand if you're using the correct weapon that's benefiting the most from it. Now we get to these other ones, Escapist, Increased Down Prone and Crouch Speed. It is a very weird perk, but it does in fact help you to move faster while prone down to end your crouch speed by about 15 to 17%, depending on which one you're looking at. So it is an improvement, but ah, uh, do you really, uh, I don't know. There's too many good perks in this category. <laughs> that one's basically trash. Uh, quick fix, quick fix, killing players or inserting a plate starts the health regeneration. And since they changed the way AMP is built in, you do get a faster plate animation by default. So because of this, you can plate in as little as two or three seconds where you're gonna start the plate, which will start the healing animation, and that'll get you healed much faster than the standard seven seconds that it takes to start health regening. And depending on how much damage you take, then it takes that amount of time to reheal the health bar. So a very good one. So a very good one, but it just depends on how you want to utilize it. This one is also another popular one that a lot of people are using just because if you take on a gunfight, especially in higher game modes, in lower game modes, unless you're just worried about a third party, it's not as valuable, but the plating is the like the best part. You can get into a gunfight, get surprised, back off, plate, and you reset that gunfight. So it has a different utility if you're playing more of a solo or if you're playing in a larger party. Tracker is also an interesting one. And remember, you can only equip one of these perks. So this one is a very competitive slot. Enemies leave behind a footprint trail, which you can see, you can do that. And then the enemy death markers are visible. I didn't really notice that in the testing. I couldn't find any footage that represented that. Um, so likely it just slips under the radar or it's not working as intended. Not 100% sure, uh, but in general, that first part is kind of why you get it, especially with smokes, you can see the footprints, you trace them and the audio, if it works in the open, you can go ahead and see that as well. Survivor is another interesting one because it doubles 
as a vest. It doubles as a vest, so you can equip this. This is the medic vest. You faster revive speed. It was able to take the revive time from five seconds to three and three quarters, which shaves off about 25%. So it is 25% faster. That's definitely noticeable when you're resing teammates or they're resing you. Uh, but and self revives, it didn't look like it was working. So I don't know if it was bugged when I was testing it, but I didn't notice a difference. I know that there's sometimes where you do self revive quicker. I don't know if it's a result of this though, because the perk and the vest work one-to-one. -one. So exactly what this one does, that's what the vest does. And that's what's the nice about this one. You don't have to equip this one knowing that you can maybe find it as a vest or vice versa, some of the other perks in here that you can also swap for a vest. So pretty okay one, but probably not one you would equip by default. Reduce cash lost on death. I did not find this to be the case. When you die, you keep 60% of your money, 35% of it drops on the floor, and then 5% gets lost as a death tax. So that's how that part works. And then enemy downed are automatically pinged. I actually got a great clip of this one where immediately when I get down, the person's behind me, all my teammates are dead. So they're not able to actually live ping and it instantaneously live pings the person who downed me. So this one could be pretty useful. That's again, probably save it for a vest. Tempered, refilled armor plate, full with two plates instead of three. That one's pretty self-explanatory. You can either do it this way or get a vest depending on which one you prefer. A lot of times getting back in the action, maybe if there's not, you can't pick up a vest as quick fix. So quick fix might have more value in that sense, because then if you get that with tempered, then you played up and you're at full health that much quicker. So again, right there, resupply, just equipment over 50 seconds. Cold blooded is a very interesting one. I think this one's super underrated at the moment, especially once we get to the last perk slot, you guys will get it. But undetectable by thermal optics, tactical cameras and recon drones does not trigger high alert in combat scout i don't think a ton of people are running combat scout but a lot of people are definitely running high alert which is probably like the highest tier perk at the moment but that could easily be countered by cold-blooded and then people might shift the last one because then they'll be like high alerts doing nothing everyone's running cold-blooded so it's kind of a trade-off there stalker again isn't that great of a perk unfortunately 15 percent additional movement when you're aimed down sight not a huge difference it needs to be like 30 percent for it to be like crazy good it's just not unless you have a full movement build and you're just trying to min max to get even faster movement i don't see this one having more value than the ones we've already talked about payout contracts pay out 10 percent more and the uav towers are discounted by 50 percent so that one's actually a pretty cool one if you want to hit the uav towers maybe someone designated for that so they hit that but you know it's kind of one of those things that i don't know if it has more value than the others primed also another interesting one when you jump you maintain the same accuracy as when you're standing still normally when you start moving and normally when you jump your hip fire spread spreads out with this it will not spread out it stays there so hip fire builds could be pretty good with primed especially if you're doing like an akimbo build it could be pretty nice because then it doesn't spread out when you jump and then the aim down sight part what i was able to figure out was about 15 percent faster which doesn't move in remove it entirely but it definitely does make a significant impact on it so i think the front runners are quick fix because you're going to find a vest for survivor and tempered and then you can always go cold-blooded uh especially if you're dealing with a lot of people are like how the heck did they know where I was? they were looking at me especially if you're sniping or doing some long range that one because High alert goes up to 100 meters, which is a pretty far distance once you actually start looking at that. Resupply could be good if you're holding out a specific POI. Uh, but yeah, I think quick fix is probably the general go-to here. Maybe one of these if you want to go with the other vest because you can only equip one vest at a time. Then we get to the last set of perks, which isn't all that competitive because we got some pretty straightforward ones. So we'll go ahead and go in order but you can see high alert is, is equipped there so ghost does require movement for uavs portable radars and heartbeat sensors to be active which is cool it gets a little bit of a nerf there so it's not as overpowered but now it has a direct counter in bird's eye so you kind of have to choose um how valuable this is because the reality is, is you think you have ghost you're off the radar somebody pops a uav they know exactly where you are with bird's eye so it, it, it kind of devalues the point of using ghost and i think that's why a lot of people have dropped off of using ghost because they literally know where you are with bird's eye somebody on their team is going to have bird's eye and they're going to know where you're at and they're going to say there's two ghosted players in that building and you're not going to catch them off guard shrouded drop a smoke grenade when entering a down state not that effective it's literally does that it drops instantaneously maybe it gives you a chance to teammate to revive you if you're always the one that goes down but you're probably better off helping the team out with bird's eye or high alert or even combat scout 
or even flex, uh, you know? But shrouded, I put it very low tier. Delay triggers explosive while sprinting warns of nearby enemy equipment and reduces combat noise. There's a part, it's not very specific, which is the warns of nearby enemy equipment. You can hear audible like click or ping saying, hey, there's equipment here, there's equipment here. And this one is, is very useful, particularly with some of the audio not being as good. This definitely does help it and does make your audio sound a little bit different. So it's a good perk, but I don't know if it's better than high alert or bird's eye at the moment. Combat Scout. Bullets you fire briefly mark an enemy for you and your squad. Hitting the enemy from farther away increases the mark time. This one is a heavily nerfed version. This one really should be a perk three or a perk two. It's not even that crazy. Um, and then this would encourage people to run more cold blooded. I don't think it should be a perk four. It, it used to be when you could outline them through the walls and like all that, I think it's kind of like average mediocre now. Bird's eye, your UAV scan faster and show a heading of direction of your squad detects ghosted players. Part of this is true, part of this is false. Your UAVs do not scan faster. They do show the heading if the people are not using ghost. If they are, they'll still show up as the red dot and only shows that directional to yourself not to your squad. And then it does detect ghosted players, which like I said, it'll turn into a dot. So super powerful and directly counters ghosts. And there's no counter for bird's eye. If you have it, you pop a UAV, you know where everyone is on the map. And there's no way to hide it. Super, super powerful. At least one person on the team should run this. If you're running a solo, high alert might be a better way to go because you're not going to come by as many UAVs unless you're locking down a stronghold. And in that case, the bird's eye could be helpful in that case as well. High alert. Vision pulses when spotted. We've had this come and go uh, because the heavy nerf to ghost and not a lot of competing in this category other than bird's eye. Generally, if like you're playing trios or quads, you'd have one person run bird's eye. All other three are gonna probably run high alert. I think that is the go-to. This could sh definitely shift. If everyone starts running cold blooded because you're tired of looking at someone and then they turn around instantly, you're like, how the heck did they know? This is how they knew. 100 meters is a very long distance. So that's kind of how that part works. And then Resolute, when taking damage from gunfire, grants a short bonus to movement speed. I believe this is only 10%, not significant in the moment. Uh, and especially it doesn't have a long shelf life. You get hit and then short bonus, that's it. This is kind of how I would build out my perks. Let me know if you're leaning towards anything else or maybe something I missed. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.